The Delaware River population um, of Atlantic sturgeon is at direct risk from a number of projects that are on trajectory for fast implementation coming up this year. An endangered listing decision for the Delaware River population must be done on an emergency basis if it's to protect the species from these known harms. Some of the projects that are barreling down the pike on, on the Delaware River Atlantic Surgeon are the Delaware Deepening, as you heard mentioned here this evening, the Southport River Fill Project, the Airport Expansion Project, natural gas drilling using hydraulic fracturing in the upper portions of the Delaware River watershed, and the LNG Crown Point Project. So just to touch on a few elements of some of these projects to explain why they're so significant. I won't touch on all of them, I'm just going to pick three of them. But the Delaware River Deepening Project. The Delaware Deepening could impose significant harm on the Atlantic sturgeon in a variety of ways, including modifying the river bottom so as to damage or, de or destroy important habitat and feeding areas, disrupting spawning migrations, changing the hydrodynamics of the river so as to alter or destroy important <coughs> habitat. The Delaware River Deepening Project requires blasting of the rock ledge that exists at Marcus Hook. We know that various life stages of Atlantic sturgeon are found around this rock ledge throughout the year, including the time when blasting would take place. Um, it's also believed that among the uses of the rock ledge for, for Atlantic sturgeon in the Delaware River is spawning, that it provides spawning habitat for our Atlantic sturgeon. The possibility of direct harm from this blasting to um, individual sturgeon fish, but there also is going to be the physical damage to this obviously important habitat for the Atlantic sturgeon in the Delaware River. Portions of the deepening project involving Kelly Island and Broad Kill Beach are scheduled at times in places and in ways that are a threat to Atlantic sturgeon. And the Army Corps of Engineers has stated its intent to ignore biological windows that would help protect the Atlantic sturgeon from these known harms. In fact, the Army Corps, what they have said is they're going to ignore the biological windows, but that they're going to put monitors out there to monitor um, when the Atlantic sturgeon get hurt by their activities. Well, monitoring doesn't do anything to protect. It's simply going to let us know when they've damaged um, or killed actual Atlantic sturgeon. So, so that's not really a, an appropriate, helpful response. The Atlantic sturgeon have been shown to avoid spoil dumping grounds. Uh, part of the spoil disposal plan for the deepening project includes dumping at buoy 10, raising concerns for the Atlantic surgeon. And these concerns about the dumping at buoy 10 have not been addressed by the Army Corps of Engineers, one of many of these harms that have not been addressed by the Army Corps when it comes to the deepening. And also deepening is going to affect the salt line of the river in a way that, it, that puts the Atlantic sturgeon at risk. Among other things, Atlantic sturgeon require fresh water for spawning. The deepening is going to contribute to the movement of the salt line of the Delaware River further upriver and so further shrink the available spawning grounds for the Atlantic sturgeon. When it comes to the Southport project, according to the listing proposal issued by the National Marine Fisheries Service, <coughs> the Atlantic sturgeon range is threatened or affected by dredging and effects to water quality including dissolved oxygen levels, water temperature, and contaminants. South, South, the Southport River Fill Project will inflict these harms on the river in reaches used by the, by the Atlantic sturgeon. According to the fish and boat representatives from the state of Pennsylvania, the Southport site is specifically valuable for young of year sturgeon in the Delaware River. We also know that the, that the sturgeon sort of used that portion of the river in the range um, of where Southport is proposed. Southport requires dredging. In fact, it requires dredging of 35 acres of the river bottom, um, and that dredging to a deeper depth is going to require maintenance dredging on into the future. So we have that, um, that harm. Southport is also going to destroy large swaths of habitat, including more than an acre of subaquatic vegetation, which is dominated by wild celery in this particular area. Because wild celery is a source of oxygen, in this reach of the river where higher oxygen levels are needed, its effect on Atlantic sturgeon, the removal of this important vegetation and its effect on oxygen levels and on Atlantic sturgeon is a concern. Further, research has, has shown that a combination of low dissolved oxygen, water temperature, and salinity 
can restrict available land sturgeon habitat. So when we talk about the removal of the water celery, coupled with the movement of the salt line proposed by the deepening, um, and the two join together to exacerbate, exacerbate the potential for habitat harm to the Atlantic sturgeon. National Marine Fishery Service has also said, quote, um, that in-water construction activities can affect short nose and Atlantic sturgeon through direct injury or mortality, displacing species from the area, or by altering the habitat and destroying forage items. I believe, actually, that that is a comment that, they, that, that National Marine Fishery Service has made with regards to the Southport project specifically. That's my recollection. The Southport project involves significant amounts of dredging, again, 35 acres, filling in over 12 acres of the actual Delaware River and other in-water construction, thus raising the significant potential for harm to the Atlantic sturgeon known to use this reach of the Delaware history. When it comes to natural gas drilling in the upper Delaware River, um, we're talking about concerns, again, for the salt line for spawning habitat for freshwater flows. The freshwater flows from the Del for coming upstream from the Delaware River are critical for preventing the, the upward migration of the salt line in the Delaware River. The salt line, again, if you move it farther upriver, it has ramifications for the Atlantic sturgeon because it starts to shrink the available spawning habitat that they have because they need that fresh water. Natural gas drilling that's now being proposed for the upper Delaware requires vast quantities of fresh water. Each natural gas well, when it undergoes a process called hydraulic fracturing or fracking, fracking, requires one to nine million gallons of water to undergo this fracking process. It's an average of 4.5 million gallons of water for each well from the Delaware River system. The Delaware River Basin Commission is estimating 10,000 wells for the upper reaches of the Delaware River watershed. Other federal officials more recently have estimated 30,000 wells for the upper portions of the Delaware River watershed. So you can see very quickly how much fresh water is going to be drawn out of that upriver system and therefore not be available to come down the river to help with the management of that salt line and prevent that, that upriver migration. Each of these projects individually, as you can hear, have their own effects, but cumulatively, the effects are even more significant. And recall, like, there are, there's the airport project and the LNG facility that I also mentioned that I haven't provided you any additional detail on in the interest of time, but it is provided in my written comment um, that I brought here tonight. Each of these projects is on fast track for implementation. They're coming down the pipe now. Um, and so if the, the endangered species listing of the Atlantic sturgeon is to have its intended effect to protect the Atlantic sturgeon from projects like these, which have such significant ramifications, we need that listing to happen and to happen now. We just don't have the luxury of that kind of time. So in sum, um, we would like to support the proposed endangered species listings that have been um, put forth in the public note. Delaware River population has its own genetic haplotype A5. There's estimated to be less than 300, maybe less than 100 spawning adults, so it should be identified as its own distinct population segment um, and granted, granted endangered species status on its own. If the Delaware River population is not listed as its own distinct population segment, then it should be listed as endangered as part of the New York bike distinct population segment as you have proposed. Listing of the Delaware River population, whether it's listed as its own DPS or part of the New York Bight DPS, should happen on an emergency basis. Um, it has to happen immediately, and the listing decision that's put forth should include the designation of the entire Delaware estuary as critical habitat, with the potential for future refinement if there's new information that, that becomes available. But we can't hold off that designation until we get more information. We can always gather more information. But the Atlantic Sturgeon need our protection. They need our help <coughs> now. We have these projects on the books, coming down the pipe, being pressed for very heavily um, and inappropriately. And this endangered species de designation is vital to protecting them from the irreversible harm that these projects individually and cumulatively would impose.